Hi! In this video, we're going to start by talking about what the second derivative, f double prime of x, tells you about the function's graph. So I've just got a graph of a generic function here that we're going to use for an example. All right, so we have been talking about for quite a while, since we first started talking about derivatives, that a derivative, the first derivative of a function is about slope. So in thinking about what the second derivative is about, we can think about that as the derivative of f prime of x. So it's describing something about slope, but it's describing how slope changes. All right, so this is where we're going to look at the graph and use the graph for an example. All right, so I'm going to just pick some points here on the graph and estimate slope of tangent lines at a few different points here. So picked a point kind of on the far left side of what I've drawn here for this graph and that slope of that tangent line is definitely negative and so you could count out dots and rise and run and all that kind of stuff but I'm going to estimate that that slope is about negative 10 right there. If you count down 10 dots and over one little dot on the graph paper. All right and then I'm going to pick another point over here maybe about right here and count out again some rise and run and think a little bit about that. At that point I might estimate that the slope is about negative uh, 3 approximately. Maybe a little little more negative than that, maybe about negative 3.5 but uh, I'll just use negative 3 as an estimate here. Alright and then as we go along here there's another place here where I've got a slope maybe around there. The slope is about negative 1.5, negative 3 halves. Uh, at the local minimum that I have down here, slope would be 0. And then as you kind of go around the local minimum, place over here where the slope is positive, maybe about positive 1, uh, maybe about right here, kind of seems to be the steepest part of the graph on this kind of part that's between the local minimum and the origin. Uh, I'm going to estimate there that the slope is about 2.5. You could count out some dots and see about that. Um, a point here, a little closer to the origin, a little bit less steep, so uh, maybe about positive 1. And actually, if that one does look more like 1, my other one down here might be a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll put 1.5, a little steeper there. Okay, so about 1. Uh, we have a place here at the origin where the slope is zero. And then my graph is symmetric actually, so I'm going to just kind of use what I've labeled on the left side here and not label points on the right side. Um, but what we want to notice here is that I've got some places where the slope is getting bigger and places where the slope is getting smaller. And you want to be careful when you think about negative numbers. So negative 10 is less than negative 3. Right, so just thinking about numerically and negative numbers and bigger and smaller, it's a little bit strange there. Negative 10 is less than negative 3, which is less than negative 1.5, which is less than 0, less than 1.5, less than 2.5. So I've got this whole region of the graph. I'm going to just mark it in green here where the slope, some places on that part of the graph, the slope is negative, and some place the slope is 0. And some places the slope is positive, but throughout that whole region of the graph, the slope is increasing, is getting bigger. And the other place where I have part of the graph where the slope is increasing is just to the right of the origin here, where the slope is zero at the origin, and then it's positive, and it's getting, the graph is getting steeper and steeper, so the slope is getting bigger and bigger until it reaches kind of that steepest place of the graph right about there. I estimated on the left side of the graph, approximately right there, and I estimated about 2.5 for the slope. So these two parts of the graph that I have marked in green here are where the slope is increasing, not the function is increasing, the slope is increasing. And sometimes students have a hard time with that because they'll say things like, it is increasing, and you really need to be clear what the it is. In this case, we're talking about the slope being increasing. And so instead of saying the slope is increasing, which sounds a little bit confusing sometimes. Uh, there's some vocabulary down below, but that uh, another way to say that, to say that the slope is increasing, is that we say that the graph is concave up or cupped upward. 
right? So if you look at those parts of the graph that I've marked there in green, the graph bends upward. It's like a cup that's cupped upward. And I have kind of a left half of that and a right half of that, like a smiley face, right? Or maybe just the left half or the right half of a smiley face in certain parts. So the part just to the right of the origin is kind of just part of a smiley face. All right, and then the other parts of the graph where I have got the slope sometimes positive and sometimes negative, but getting smaller. So I estimated the slope was about 2.5 and then one and then zero. So the slope is decreasing on this part of the graph that I labeled pink right here. And then another place where the slope is decreasing. Again, that's kind of a confusing way to describe it. It is true, it's what's happening, but sometimes students forget about what it is we're describing as decreasing and they'll just say it is decreasing. The slope is decreasing here. And so as a way to sort of describe what's happening on those two parts of the graph that I labeled in pink there, uh, we call that part of the graph concave down. So the graph is cupped downward kind of like a sad face or maybe just a left or right half of a sad face. Maybe you just have half of that. Notice this part that is just a little bit left of the origin is kind of just a half of a sad face. All right, so one of the things that you want to be able to do is look at a picture of a graph and see where the graph is cupped upwards or cupped downwards. So thinking about happy face or sad face. The actual mathematical meaning though is this idea about the slope increasing or the slope decreasing and so we're describing how the slope changes. All right down below is a little bit of vocabulary the mathematical statements that I just kind of described here in the picture. A function is concave up on an interval if the derivative is increasing and so another way to say that what we just talked about here the derivative is increasing would be to say that the second derivative is positive. Again, to remember what that looks like, kind of one or both of the two sides of a happy face. Second derivative positive. A function f is concave down on an interval if the slope or derivative is, oh, I have a typo here. It says increasing, but that should be decreasing on that interval. So f prime decreasing, and that would happen when the second derivative is negative. Sorry about that typo there. All right, uh, another vocabulary word here, an inflection point is a point where a function f changes concavity or it changes from concave up to concave down or vice versa. All right, so when we think about inflection points, in some ways they are sort of like extrema of a function. Remember extrema are where a function changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. Inflection points are where a function graph changes from concave up to concave down or vice versa. And so when we started by thinking about how to look for extrema, we started by looking for critical values or critical points. Our textbook does not use this language, but some textbooks do. And so just kind of a, just a way to describe those places where we might look for possible inflection points. So hypercritical value of x is a value of x equals c in the domain where the second derivative is zero or does not exist. And so I'll often abbreviate that hypercritical value. Those occur where the second derivative is zero or does not exist, but the x is in the domain of the function. And so just like thinking about first derivative, critical values, helping you decide where functions are increasing, decreasing, these hypercritical values kind of play the same role here. They help split the regions up into where the function is concave up and concave down. So we have a couple theorems about that we'll look at and an example. Okay, so this theorem basically just summarizes what we kind of talked about with what a second derivative means. Uh, so it tells you that if the second derivative is greater than zero or the second derivative being positive for all x in an interval, then the function is concave up on that interval. I use this little sort of picture, second derivative positive concave up like a happy face to kind of visualize that idea and represent what we're talking about here. And again, remembering that you might not have the whole happy face, it could just be one half or the other of the happy face, but cupped upward. Uh, second derivative less than zero, so second derivative negative, 
on an interval, then the function is concave down on that interval. And so sometimes I use this second derivative negative sad face to think about concave down. All right, so just like we used sign charts for first derivatives and we drew a number line and we labeled on the number line our critical points, here we're gonna label some hypercritical values, however many we have on our number line. Also, if there are breaks in the domain, you would wanna label those because those are also places where a function could change concavity. And then you wanna look at the sign of the second derivative, the sign of the second derivative being positive or negative, or maybe changing signs or maybe not, help indicate to you where the function is concave up, concave down, and or concave up. Okay, and any place where it changes concavity, those would be inflection points. All right, so we will look at some examples down below. Uh, this second theorem, we're not gonna use a lot today. We will use it later in some application problems, but it is a way to sort of connect critical values and or use concavity to help you tell about local extrema. If you know you have a critical point, so again, that comes from the first derivative, but you examine the concavity of the function at that critical point, then you can just kind of think about visualizing the happy face and the sad face. If you know that the second derivative is positive, then you know that the function is concave up, and so your critical point would have to be a local minimum. And the second one should have the inequality the other way around here. Uh, so that one should have less than another typo I noticed here. Okay, so second derivative negative, then your function would be concave down around that critical point, and then you would have a local maximum. All right, let's look at this first example here and we will find inflection points and intervals where this function is concave up and concave down. Notice that we actually already did this function with first derivatives and indicated critical points and where the function was increasing and decreasing, and now we're just doing some things with the second derivative. All right, so let's go ahead and find the first and second derivative. Remember that it's important that you find your derivatives correctly. If you don't do that, everything else is gonna be messed up. Um, but the things that it's asking me for here, points of inflection and intervals on which the function is concave up and concave down, all of those things really come from the second derivative. All right, so I've got my second derivative. I'm going to look at where that second derivative does not exist or is equal to zero. The second derivative exists everywhere. The second derivative, 6x minus 12, is defined for all values of x, so I don't have any of those kind here. And then... When I think about my second derivative being zero, I'm gonna put zero equal to six x minus 12 and solve for x. And what I'm finding here are my hypercritical values. Um, so the algebra there is pretty easy. Sometimes you have harder algebra, but on this one, it's pretty straightforward. You're gonna get x equals two. So I have one possible point of inflection. I don't actually know if that's a point of inflection until I test whether the function changes concavity. All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna make a number line I'm gonna label my hypercritical value on there. And then what I wanna look at is the sign of the second derivative because it's asking me about concavity and that's what the sign of the second derivative tells me about. All right, so when I look at my second derivative and I plug in numbers left of two or right of two and think about the sign that I get on those output. So when you plug in something less than two, like say zero, you get that that second derivative is negative. And so in that region, the graph is concave down. And when you plug in something right of two, like for example, three, you get that the second derivative is positive. So in that region, the function is concave up. All right, and so that means that at x equals two, I do have a point of inflection because it actually changes. Those are not the same. And so I really do have a point of inflection at x equals two. All right, so to answer my question here, I would say that the function f of x is concave up on the interval 2 to infinity. Uh, I would say that the original function is concave down on negative infinity to 2. And I have an inflection point 
at x equals 2. If I want the actual coordinates of the inflection point, that would be an x, y coordinate. So I could get that by evaluating the original function at x equals 2. Original function gives you input output pairs x, y coordinates. All right, and if I were doing this problem on a test and I had a graphing calculator, I might go ahead and graph the original function and look at the graph and see if the graph actually appears to be cupped upward, cupped upward when we're right of the point at, at x equals 2 and cupped downward when we are left of the point at x equals 2. And so that's what you should expect to see when you look at a graph. All right, we'll do some more examples in the next videos.